The artist I will be presenting on is Paul Klee. Paul Klee was born on December 18, 1879 in Switzerland. He was the second born in the Klee family. His sister, Mathilde, was born in January three years earlier. His parents, Hans Wilhelm Klee and Ida Marie Klee, were musicians. Paul Klee's father studied singing, piano, organ, and violin at Stuttgart Conservatory Music School. This is where his parents met. Because of this, Paul Klee developed music skills in his childhood home and became an exceptional violinist. Klee followed his parents' wishes of becoming a musician in his childhood, but in his teenage years, he wanted to focus on the visual arts. He did this partially to rebel against his parents and partially because he believed that modern music lacked meaning for him. At age 16, Klee showed lots of skills in the visual arts. In 1897, when Paul Klee was 18, he started a diary. During his school years, he drew in school books, so his diary was something that was more personal for his drawings. He demonstrated skill with lines as shown in the picture from his diary. It provided scholars with lots of insight into his life and thinking. In 1898, Paul Klee's parents reluctantly allowed him to study art at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich. Klee excelled in drawing, but lacked natural color sense. The drawing shown was done while he was in college. It clearly shows his ability to draw, but lacks color. After receiving his degree, Klee went to Italy and studied painters of past centuries with his friend Hermann Haller in October of 1901 to May of 1902. He learned color represented optimism and nobility in art, which contrasted from the pessimistic nature in his black and white drawings. In 1906, Klee married Lily Stumpf. The following year, they had their only son, Felix Paul Klee. They lived in Munich, where she gave piano lessons and he stayed at home. He stayed at home to take care of the house and the child and to also work on his art. His work progressed slowly for the next five years. In 1910, Klee had his first solo exhibition in Bern. His style of painting was influenced by movements in art that included Expressionism, Cubism, and Surrealism. He experimented with and mastered color theory. These three paintings were made before the exhibit, so they were more than likely included in the exhibit. In 1911, Klee's career took off. His art shows lots more detail and a look towards the absurd and sarcastic messages in his art. His work reflects dry humor, a childlike perspective, his personal moods and beliefs, and his musicality. Both of these paintings by Paul Klee show lots of detail and lots of color. In 1912, Paul Klee contributed 17 works to the second Blue Rider exhibition at the Gallery Golds. He did not attend this exhibit, but his artwork was greatly appreciated. This exhibit only included graphic arts. A couple examples of Paul Klee's graphic art pieces are shown. In 1913, Paul Klee started studying modern theories of color. He traveled to Paris in 1912, which exposed him to cubism and abstract art. All of these paintings were published in 1914 and all show definite cubism qualities. They also show shades of one color, which is unique to his art at this time in his career. In 1914, World War I began. It did not affect Paul Klee until two of his friends died. To cope with their deaths, he created pen and ink lithographs on war themes. In 1916, he joined the German war effort behind the scenes with his father. He painted camouflage on airplanes. He also painted during the entire war. After the war ended, Klee secured a three-year contract with Hans Goltz in 1919. His gallery gave Klee lots of exposure. Klee also received an annual income with this job and made over 300 works in 1920. The paintings shown are just a few of the paintings he made that year. Klee received a job teaching at Bauhaus School of Design, Architecture, and Applied Arts from 1921 to 1931. He was considered the form master where he taught bookbinding, stained glass, and mural painting workshops. He was provided with two different studios to work in.
Klee was a member of the Blue Four with Alexei von Halinsky, Vasily Kadinsky, and Lionel Feininger that formed in 1923. The four of them lectured and exhibited together in the U.S. in 1925. In this year, Klee also had his first exhibit in Paris and impressed the French Surrealists. Klee taught at the Dusseldorf Academy from 1931 to 1933. His home was searched by the Gestapo and he was fired. The painting shown commemorates the sad occasion. Klee met Pablo Picasso, one of his idols, in London. After this, Paul and his wife and child moved to Switzerland. In 1932 and 1933, Klee was at the peak of his creativity. The painting shown is considered to be his best example of his pointless style. It is also one of his largest, most finely worked paintings. In 1933, he produced about 500 works while still in Germany, before moving to Switzerland. At the end of 1933, Klee experienced symptoms of scleroderma, which makes your hands swell. The progression of this fatal disease impacted his ability to produce artwork in the following years. He only produced 25 paintings in 1936, just three years after he was diagnosed. In the later 1930s, Klee's health somewhat recovered. He decided to make larger but simpler pieces of artwork. In 1939, his final full year of producing artwork, he made over 1,200 paintings, which was a career high for a single year. He used heavier lines and geometric shapes in his artwork. His last painting has the hidden message, Todd, which means death. He knew death was approaching him in 1940. Paul Klee died on June 29, 1940 in Switzerland. His legacy brings us over 9,000 works of art. His artwork throughout his career shows expressionalism, cubism, and surrealism.